Welcome to the show, folks. Another edition of Pod Crash this week, Crashing Wheel Nerds. What is Wheel Nerds? Uh, it's a show about bikers. And I used to ride I used to ride a motorcycle. I no longer ride a motorcycle. And there's a reason behind that. You'll find out about it on the show. Not just a show about motorcycles. It's also nerdy biker culture stuff. I, we talk about the best biker movies and get into an epic story of uh, what happened to me the day when I was riot, the, the LA riots had broken out and I rode my motorcycle home from work. It's a fascinating story, I think, and I uh, tell that story on Wheel Nerds, which is later on the show. A uh, couple, couple of things. First, some plugs. Uh, doing stand-up at the Holy Fuck Comedy Show, Tuesday, April 24th at 9 p.m. That's at the Downtown Independent Theater, 251 South Main Street. It's in Los Angeles, and it's free. Free! Free comedy. Uh, and it's at, uh, you can get more info at holyfuckcomedy.com. Also, uh, May 4th through 6th, I will be at the Catalina Film Festival. Uh, they'll be screening, first of all, a bunch of indie movies, but also The Avengers with Stan Lee. Stan friggin' Lee is going to be there for a screening of The Avengers, and I'll be doing a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him on Saturday, May 5th. Uh, it's going to be amazing. You can get more information at CatalinaFilm.org. And if you'd like to win a pair of passes to the festival... You live uh, in the air. You live near Catalina. You live in the. You're in the LA area. You're thinking it might be fun to do a day trip to a film festival and hang out with me. I'm giving away passes to the festival. If you go to pod, if you go to Facebook.com/slash/podcrash, just say let's get out of here and give me those Catalina Film Festival tickets, Chris. And you know, if you don't win the tickets, you can you can still come there anyways. Stanley will be there. I'll be there, and a lot of other special guests. A lot of cool indie films. Okay, uh, let's, let's get on to uh, some business. Last week, I went on a rant about this poll that iTunes had posted on Facebook about featuring one of the top comedy podcasts on iTunes. And some of you reacted. Some of you think I might have taken a little too far. I mean, I have to say, look, I, I've got a sense of humor. I, I think I have a sense of humor about myself. Uh, I, I, I really was just using humor to make a point about the fact that iTunes is basically the only choices they gave you in this thing were the five podcasts, which are already in the top five in comedy, and then the choice of other. My suggestion, choose other, because uh, this bizarre algorithm that, that iTunes has, it's, the, the analogy is it's, it's like if the same five movies were stayed in movie theaters for years. That's your only choices. Uh, it's, a little, it's a little irritating. While every other section of iTunes... Movies, music, TV, they rotate new content as it comes in, and it doesn't go away. It, it remains in there. It's just, it's no longer new. And I feel like I, everybody already knows about these top podcasts. There are no other podcasts that can double, that can like uh, bubble to the surface for you to listen to. Unless, of course, you listen to this show and then you find out about things like Wheel Nerds or Film Threat. And uh, I, I appreciate those of you that, that, that like the fact that, you know, you get to discover new new podcasts. So look, I, I'm, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. We're going to lose, by the way, the poll, the way it's going right now. Adam Carolla is in number one on this poll, and he's ahead by 3,000 votes. It's not going to happen, unfortunately. But iTunes should really take it as a message that in second place is other, that, that I think that just people who are fans of podcasts, among them myself, would prefer to see other podcasts get get sort of ro rotated in as they come in new and then and then that's maybe that's the better criteria if they're new and then you know after a week they're not new and they just come in it's just this is new today and and whatnot um i, I don't know i don't have an answer for it but i think it's it's worth bringing up um in terms of discussion amongst people who actually work doing podcasts or are fans of them like myself but also i, I come to realize these last couple podcasts i keep dealing with stuffing stuff from the last podcast so I feel bad if you're a new listener of the show, it's the first episode you've listened to. I don't, you know, you don't have to feel obligated to go back and listen to previous episodes of the show. I hope that you would do that. But if you're a new listener, you should just be able to jump right in and enjoy the show. So um, I'm actually launching in the next month. I'm launching uh, a website for the show, PodCrash.net, where if you're listening to something, maybe you're in your car, you're listening to it. You don't. There's like something we mention, a website or a link or a, someone, a, a, a Twitter someone's Twitter handle. We're going to have all of that data archived on the site uh, for you. So that's coming in the next month. I'll let you know more about it. And, and Wesley Marshall, my faithful intern, is toiling away. He's 
and actually, this is one of those cases where you can actually use the word toiling. He is toiling away, listening to every episode, taking down all the pieces of information that someone m- might want to reference post-show, whether it be a YouTube video, a website, whatever. And it's really going to be a little FAQ information sheet about that episode, everything. So there you go. I'll let you know when that launches. Uh, but uh, so, so that's it. Now, look, I got to tell you something. I, I was dreading doing this week's podcast. I'm in the midst of a, just a, a weird like career, I feel like a career crisis just because, you know, when you hear about all the projects I'm up to, I'm working on all these projects. And when one of them starts to sort of go on all cylinders, that gets, that gets the bulk of my attention. But, and by going all cylinders, meaning people are giving me money to do it. So developing a lot of stuff, this is normal for anybody in entertainment and, and everybody's a hyphenate in ways. There are more hyphenates than you know. You normally hear like, Oh, he's a writer, director. He's a, filmmaker slash producer there's a million hyphenates you know i mean look i'm 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 doing this i'm doing work on g4 tv attack the show right then i've got i'm doing the stand-up stuff which is fun i've got this podcast then i'm producing two animated pilots at the moment which if you were at the WonderCon panel you would have gotten a glimpse of that stuff uh an early look so to speak i'm still working on those and it's it's i feel like you kind of have to have all that stuff going but it's like since I left Film Threat a couple of years ago, I've, I've been trying to change my career in another direction. And it is literally, I described it to a friend, it's like taking a giant battleship and just doing a 180 and turning it, but very, very fast. And it's, it's hard for someone to understand who's, you know, gets the, 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 the normal paycheck job, of which I've had many of those. I mean, I currently have one. I feel lucky to have one uh, with, with, with G4 at the moment, but I don't know how long that's going to last. I mean, I do know that that, uh, I mean, it's the most fun I've had in TV, but I've been there now seven years and I, 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 you know, I don't know what my future is on the network. I gotta be honest with you. I have no idea what's, what is, what my future is there, to be honest. I, I, I don't know. I know that there are changes coming. If you've been reading the trades as a new guy who's in charge of G4, I have not met him. So I have no idea what I, I only hear rumors and I'm the, I'm the worst about that. Cause usually I just don't care. I don't care about the rumors and the gossip and this and whatever. It's usually people running around nuts, t- spreading stuff that's not true. But uh, I, in this case, I, I, I think something's going to happen. I think something's going to happen. I, and so I have no idea how I, how I may fit in to uh, uh, the, the new vision for the network. So, so there you go. It's, it's one of those things where not a lot of people talk about this too. I, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like it's one of those curses where it's, 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 it's when I'm having one of those kind of off days, I, I, I can't sit there and lie to you. And that when someone, the, the standard issue answer to any, oh, yeah, how you doing? Fine. I can't say fine. I, here's what I can say. I can say fine, fine. I'm fine. Because that kind of is how I feel at the moment. I feel that kind of fine. If, if you know what I'm saying. So it's, it's, I think it was a buddy of mine, Arthur Borman, put it best. He said, you know, our job working in this industry, which is so bizarre. Wh- let, me, let me explain before I say what Arthur said. This is, this is what all conversations are like with me. It's this bizarre ADD where I'll begin to tell a story. I kind of stop, pause, do a divert, tell another story, come back to the original. I, I will get to my point. But the idea is, is that I've either always been broke and poor or lived poor in the fear that I may be broke again. Let me explain. You know, grow up, grew up in Detroit, kind of, kind of dirt poor, but didn't really know at the time that I was poor. Who cares? I just worked jobs and whatever. So worked my way, almost. I didn't really. I worked my way through halfway through college, but and then didn't graduate. But but the whole thing is, is that I just didn't have money, just enough to to live. Then there were points in my life where I began doing television and other stuff, or actually started to make money for the first time. I actually started making like, oh my god, I make it like I have money, like I can afford things, like I can actually charge something huge on my credit card and then go and then pay the whole thing off. But then you get sort of this paranoia because the weird thing about uh, the entertainment business is jobs are, are finite. They last a certain amount of time. They last like, you know, if it's a season for a show, like six months or it lasts maybe a year. So then you're living in fear of like, well, I'm making a lot of money now, but I don't know if I'll have that money later. I better save it. Ugh, I just, I don't know. Should I buy that round of drinks for my friends? Well, yes, I will. But so, so, so it's sort of, learn to live fairly cheaply 
and live. I think this explains my wardrobe, why I'm why I'm so into just getting the the sort of you know old school clothes and then just sort of modding them to make them my own or stealing from the wardrobe department at G four. Um, and I ask permission first. I don't actually take something unless I'm allowed to. Um, anyways, so so it's you're sort of always living in fear of like ah you know I could I could just, this this thing this gig could end tomorrow and I don't have any money. But my my buddy Arthur Borman said, look, your job working in the entertainment industry is is to basically uh, work work on it, bring your friends up, and then lie to everybody about how great it is once you've made it. And a lot of, a lot of people might. Have, a, a, have the you know wrong assumption that I've made it. I certainly don't feel that way, and I'm a terrible liar. I mean, just ask any of my ex girlfriends. I'm the worst liar ever. I can't. I'm awful at lying. So if I'm if I'm sitting here bummed out about career related things, it's just because I can't. I can't say fine. I'm fine. Can you hear me now? I'm fine. Yeah, it's not. It's not fine. I'll, I'll I'll let you know when I'm out of the woods on this one. All right, let's get to this week's crash. I was on a show called Wheel Nerds, uh, hosted by Todd Cox, Chuck Brewer, uh, and it's uh, it's a show about uh, riding motorcycles. The love, the passion for riding bikes, riding out a hog. And uh, as I talk about on the show, I used to ride to work a 1972 Daytona uh, Triumph 500, and I would ride that to work. Er- I would ride it to work every day, pay nothing in gas. Insurance was like a hundred bucks a year because it was a classic bike. It was amazing. I stopped riding for a number of reasons, and I'll, I'll, I'll dis- I discussed that actually on the show, uh, and it was it was, this was conducted over Skype, so the audio is not going to be it's not going to be as it's not going to be as sexy as uh, my voice is right now when I get right up close to the microphone and. And talk to you. So it's it's not going to sound like that. It's just going to sound like a, it's going to sound like a Skype interview. Uh, but these guys were great. I totally love this podcast. Love the idea that these guys they're they're definitely bikers. They're definitely into you know uh, the passion for riding motorcycles. But they're into geeky stuff too. Uh, they play video games and they're into to action figures and just all the cool. So I totally could relate to these dudes. You should know about this podcast. It's not all biker talk. But here I am, wheel nerds. So what got you into riding a bike? Was it just the, the practicality thing or was it <laughs> practicality? <laughs> right. Well, no, no. The, 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 was it the chicks? Uh, like anything you, like that. It's like to me, I really just thought it was cool. Like like I'm being a big fan of like James Dean and a big fan of like The Wild One uh, with Marlon Brando. Easy Riders, one of my favorite biker movies. I'd never ridden a motorcycle. And so when it was my buddy was selling it, I'm like, yeah, I'll buy it. Not not even knowing how to ride a bike at all. I just bought it just right there. You were riding a Triumph Daytona, right? Yeah, a 72 Triumph Daytona 500 that basically uh, took apart to the bone, uh, to the frame. Bone, frame, same thing. Uh, put it back together, and in that whole process, I mean, learn, first of all, uh, Triumphs are, I'm not going to say they're unreliable, but make sure you have some side bags with some tools in it. <laughs> I can't speak to the modern Triumphs. I mean, to me, they don't even look like Triumphs. They look like those, I don't know, those jet bikes that people tend to like that are out of Akira. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I loved it. I loved it because, A, I mean, I bought this thing for like 600 bucks, and it, it barely ran, so I wanted to restore it. And it was it was really a practical matter, you know. It was I could save so much money riding a bike, and because it was a classic <laughs> bike, I only paid 125 bucks for insurance, and then it was three dollars a week in gas. Of course, this was you know this was in the 90s, early 90s, mm-hmm. and it was I loved it. I mean, it was like one of those things where first of all, I don't I I never got to ride out in the country, which is something you guys get to enjoy being in Utah. Oh yeah, when the bike's running. <laughs> yeah, with the bikes running, but I, I but driving in the city is a whole different story. And like, it's just bumper to bumper traffic, and it drives me nuts. It's it, it drives me insane. And you know, when you're on a bike, if you can safely, once cars are on a full stop, I just pull right up to the front. I would pull right up to the front of a light, and then just like go my merry way past everybody. 
And, you know, it's not that difficult, but I did take like a training course that they have with the, you know, the the DMV. They they have this training course, except I was sitting here riding my Triumph and it was a 500. They had these little like Honda 125s that like it was like riding a toy car. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, Todd's a teacher. Yep. (laughs) They're fun. (laughs) They're fun, but they were, like, overly responsive, I thought. And, you know, the the, the Triumph was just a bit more creamy, you know, between the legs. And (laughs) I didn't mean anything by that, guys. But, I, you know, I first I love to be mechanical and I feel like now we've kind of lost that sense of that, you know, where I'm only mechanical when it comes to technology or if I want to mod my car. But mm-hmm. what was cool about the Triumph, well, there was cool, good and bad things. One, you know, it was like getting those NOS parts, you know, the new old stock stuff. Like that was a pain in the ass. I'd always have to order from someplace in Florida and they'd have great stuff. Then I would go to pick your parts because I also had like a 1965 Champagne Gold Ford Fairlane. <laughs> and that thing was uh, it, so. But, but this is, you know, I feel like that that just you, doesn't exist anymore. I feel like that whole kind of car culture, you know, build it yourself, restore it, is over. That era is kind of gone, and now it's migrated to technology and computers. And that's how guys brag now is the size of their hard drives instead of like what they built themselves. Well, yeah, because you can just go to the internet and order stuff out of catalog and have mm-hmm. the AutoZone install it for you or something. But you know, like you guys have classic bikes. What do you guys have? Well, what do you have, Todd? I've got a Euro, which is not technically classic, but sure feels like it sometimes. Well, the design hasn't changed since... uh, 30s. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, when the new casing had to come from uh, Siberia, that was uh, that was a long wait. Wow. I'm actually riding a modern Triumph. I'm on a, a 2012 Thruxton. Ooh, which how is, are those? It is a fun bike. I mean, you know, it's it's that retro vintage, faux vintage look where they, they make the, the fuel injector look like a carburetor. It's a blast to ride. It is a lot of fun. So you don't have to tickle the carb before you start? No, but it has like this f- fake choke that <laughs> <laughs> uh, feeds it more gas if you want because the wow. computer can't. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> understand that one at all. But it's cool. <laughs> wow. I, I See, I've been tempted lately. I mean, I'll tell you, I stopped riding, and I'll, t- I'll tell you why later. But, I, but I've been tempted lately just because I see, like, how good they are now. They're cheaper with the price of gas. Like, I really feel like, you know, these, these I see these, like, giant SUVs. Like, I guess I can understand if you work in a job in construction and whatnot. Like, you, you need to have a vehicle that has a lot of space. You need a big truck like that. But those are just, some of those are just so unnecessary. When I see, like, mom picking up the kids from school, it's like, you don't need a, you don't need a vehicle that large. You're but it's safer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried about safety. I barely felt the 72 Triumph under my wheels. <laughs> uh, the 72 Triumph, is, it, was, it was fine. It was just enough for me. You know, I'm not a big guy. I'm like... You know, I'm like a five ten. Uh, at the time, I probably weighed like one forty. Now I'm now I'm a little bit more. But I I love the sense that the one thing was I loved about riding, which is why I was so hooked, was it was the closest I felt I'd ever get to feeling like I was flying. Oh yeah, I know that feeling. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, I would always yeah. I mean, that's that's what addicts you as as a rider. Like just just as like I feel like I'm flying, and I I would always stick my arms out. I had like the, the you know that the handlebars on those the bars on those are like these like you stick your arms all the way out and you want to have like I had a pair of like gauntlet style like leather gloves so that you know the wind wouldn't go down my sleeves and I just sit there and make sure that we're and it was it was just a, like I would imagine in my head I was Superman the Christopher Reeve version like <laughs> <laughs> in my brain I was like da, 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 da. so you know, he's like particular to pick out it's Christopher Reeve <laughs> yeah not that other Superman that guy sucks not George or you know the one that got shot or <laughs> right right no but that, that was that was my that was a Superman man that I, I i liked i liked it more for the soundtrack than anything else and the, the oh, first yeah. one and a half movies i guess one of the the best advantages of riding a bike in la is the cost i mean i was talking about earlier just being broke or living like you're broke and i could fill up my gas tank for under 10 bucks under 10 bucks and then insurance was like 125 bucks here and then you never have to pay for parking in la paying for parking in la is a huge hassle it's a pain in the ass but you can park kind of between vehicles and And uh, yeah, so a lot of advantages there in terms of money. And then in addition, I never drank when I was driving a motorcycle just out of fear that I would do something stupid. So I'd go to the bar. I'd still get a drink. I would get like I would get a non-alcoholic beer, which is dumb, but it definitely cuts down on your drinking. And then because of that, you save money. Now I'm now I'm actually I'm convincing myself I should actually go back to riding a bike. 
it's just the the threat of dying that is is what gets me. I'll we'll I get into that later. Okay, back to wheel nerds. But driving in LA, I I almost got killed so many times, and I'd seen an accident. I have a vivid memory of being a kid. I was probably like seven, eight years old, driving with my grandmother, and we saw an accident on the opposite side of a freeway where a guy had spilled on his motorcycle and it shot up sparks. So he was, I mean, he was down on the freeway and sparks were flying out. I mean, <laughs> intensely. It was like, I have no idea what happened. We passed, but that vivid memory really shocked me as a kid. And then I also, a, a guy that I made friends with, uh, named Vincent Waller, who would work on, he worked on the Ren and Stimpy show for Spumco and he's an animator. And cool. he told me a story about his uncle who got in a, a motorcycle accident. He got an accident somehow where his arm got tangled up in some of the, you know, where it went like under something. His arm got tangled up and pulled off all the skin on his arm and turned it into it's like it, it came off in like a meat sleeve. Everyone's got the the uncle story, I think. I, I think I'm, I'm I saw convinced. that in a movie once. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm always suspicious of the the uncle cousin story. This guy and he did uh, well. I do have, like, two friends who actually have, like, permanent lips, but it was the same accident for both of them. Like, they were making a left-hand turn, and they were behind a car. So their whole thing was, and, and my philosophy was, okay, if you're in L.A., you're behind a car, you're making a left-hand turn. That's that's the bad – that's where people don't see you, and people don't look for most mm -hmm. drivers. So I would always just lay on my horn when I went through intersections. <laughs> <laughs> guys are like you're so lucky living in utah like did, did you put on a, like a different horn like a big old like boat horn or something um no i had that typical triumph <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're laughing because <laughs> the sound was but it, it was loud enough to let people like you know uh i mean it was just to me like all right like i'm gonna do my family doesn't want me to ride this motorcycle so i'll just do right i'll do the full face helmet fine and then i'll i'll lay on my horn when i go through intersections fine. I'll, I'll just do that. But the worst part was when I would get in these near accidents, it was always someone like I'm going between traffic. They're trying to do something or they're, they're not looking for me. You know, they're coming in another lane. You guys must have been in near accidents. People Always don't see you. Nope. They're, they're changing lanes. They're not looking for someone on a motorcycle. And I remember a couple times this happened where someone was just a jerk. You know, they don't give you enough room to go around you because they think, oh, he's a bike rider. He doesn't need enough room. Um, I would pull up to those guys. And I'm not a tough guy. I mean, not, I'm not intimidating in any sense. But <laughs> So I would pull up to these guys after almost getting sideswiped and like and and killed and I would I would pull right up to their car. I'd look right at the guy, I'd point my finger. I'd pull up my you know my visor just so I'd look him right in the eye and I'd say, "Hey man, you see that?" and I would point to my leg. That's flesh, not metal. Watch your driving. So would you want to go back to riding? A absolutely. Only if I didn't live in L.A. Like, cause, because just because it's such a practical way of getting around and it's also that sense of – there's a sense of freedom. Everyone says this. I, it's cliche. But you but you you know it when you're feeling it, when you're riding on that thing. And it's that sense of like ah, this. This is this is what it's like to fly. This is what it is like to fly when you especially when you've got something more than a 500 between your legs. You know, definitely a bigger a, something with a little bigger engine and you gun it. it it's just it's. It's it's like that extra burst in a racing video game. I'm trying mm -hmm. to explain it to my audience. Uh, no, we're, we're, we're nerds. We're, we're, we know nothing of these video games. We're cool bike riding guys who don't wear onesies and play video games in the offseason. Right. Hey, I got to show you that mod I got for Skyrim. Sweet. <laughs> but, it's, yeah, but it's like that whole, like, when you get that burst, I mean, like, like and, and what's so funny is, is once I actually sold my bike, it was so disheartening. It was in the garage. I just had to, like... My kids were like getting an age where I'm like, I really need to rethink this, you know, and I can afford a car now. So I did get one. <laughs> I can afford a car. That was part of it. I, I didn't get rid of the bike, but I kept it for a while. I finally ended up selling it on eBay one Christmas, just thinking it. And it was just to watch it go away was really disheartening. But then it was like, well, they do make they do make motorcycle riding video games, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> there was that one for EA Sports. What was the one? It was so, it always had like, it had always had too many ads. That's all I remember from it. It was, it was just like, well, it's EA. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. There was so much advertising in this video game. It was annoying, but I, I that was just the, the, the only way I could sort of recreate the experience was just doing that. And all it did was just like tap into my memory about it. Chris, I got a piece of advice for you, and this is probably going to sell a lot of urals to your listeners too. Let's hear it. 
First of all, if you like old vintage, you'll love the Ural. You like working on stuff? You like a little quirky? You're going to love it. Bring a good toolkit. You'll need it. Good. Here's the other cool thing about riding a sidecar. When you ride a sidecar, it doesn't lean. You go around a corner and you learn to drift it. And I'm just going to throw this out for your listeners. Riding a sidecar, blue sparks. Whoa. Enough said. Nice. Mario Kart turns every turn. <laughs> so wait, how do you spell Ural? U R A L. That's it. So that's the name. Of, that's the name of the bike. All right, I'm, I'm googling it right now. Okay, so I've never actually been in a, a motorcycle accident, but I have. Um, I have dropped my bike. I, I have dropped my bike like on myself. It's really embarrassing, but it's not. First of all, a little a Triumph 500. It's not a big bike. It's it's like it's like having a lawnmower on top of you. Uh, you know, in terms of the weight, it's it's more embarrassing than it is. You know, the, the, you're not going to hurt yourself really. Um, but uh, so I looked up URAL dot com Earl. It's these Russian motorcycles that have sidecars. First thing I think is it looks like the old uh, Batman, the old '60s Batman TV show. It looks like that the bike that Batman had in that because it's got the sidecar where Robin would sit. Uh, and the cost of these things, these Russian bikes, is between like ten, ten and sixteen grand. They're kind of all over the map, but I mean they're cool looking. It definitely is. I mean, it costs you as much as a car. I'm sure it's the gas is cheaper, uh, but you're going to have to drive it like a car because if you've got the sidecar, you're going to have to be, it's like driving a really tiny car with no doors or windows. You've got no insides. Okay, uh, more fascinating stories on Wheel Nerds. I got to ask you guys this because you mentioned this earlier. You mentioned the Bat Bike. I mean, that is in the dark night. That is one of the, to me, yes, it is sort of a weird design for a a motorcycle that comes, who knew that he had a motorcycle under the Batmobile? I just keep it hidden there. Yeah, just in case. Just in case. But how do you think, like, I've seen actually videos on YouTube where people try to recreate the, like, a a real version of that bike. Like, have you seen those videos? Yeah, we've uh, we've covered that on the show. Uh, uh, Quite a few shops have have built a version of the Batpod. Mm -hmm. And they're... They're all kind of varying degrees of accuracy. Mm-hmm. I just think, like, how practical is that? Because I feel it would be really dangerous, like, to ride in that style. I guess maybe you could. Well, if you've got a cape and cowl, you know, that would probably be a little dangerous. Those never get caught in anything. No. <laughs> exactly. That would just rip his head off. But I, but uh, I don't know. It, it's 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 broadly wildly impractical. I mean, the things you see about it. First of all, you look at the wheelbase of the thing, and it's like a million feet long. It's yeah. just longer than long. And the tires are like a foot and a half wide. Tires are super duper wide, which are not really a very turny shape for a tire. You need a round tire to really right. turn. And there'll be all these people arguing about, well, you can get a tire that squishes on the side and use a cart. Realistically, you want a tire you can roll up on the side of. Something like that, you're going to need a lot of force to roll up on the side of, which brings us to the problem of control. You're going to need some way to affect some steering on those tires. And if you're lying on your stomach, you're using like the worst muscles in your body to operate <laughs> the controls. <laughs> So, so what you're saying is, this is the 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 bat pod was made to look cool in a movie, but it's not practical in real life. Yeah, there's a reason it rammed into a camera. <laughs> it, it'd probably be a great bike for the drag strip. That's true. Yeah, because it's got the long wheelbase. It's mm-hmm. got the a lot of rubber on the ground, mm-hmm. but uh, not on a track. God forbid the road should turn. It's why in uh, the Dark Knight he has to do that turn with the wheels flipping over and over and over instead yes, the, the of turning like a real bike. Fine device. <laughs> Yeah, and also just the, the to me, I'm just looking at that going like, okay, that looks cool, but like his cape might get caught in the wheel. Might, God. <laughs> I guarantee you there's some outtakes. I hope it's like, attached with Velcro. I'm looking for really practical at this point, which would probably be the two grand bike with the sidecar that I made. <laughs> Wait, I would need, I want to see this. <laughs> No, that would not be very safe. I, 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 I would, would avoid that. But I'm sure that if I got it, I'd definitely mod it into something that was bat pod like. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do the old '60s uh, style. You, you, <laughs> that it, I could do that. That would totally lend itself to a euro. When, I just, I just, I just felt his wallet open from here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know this. I'm sure I could find this online, but maybe you guys know. What was the the bat cycle that was in the old 60s Batman TV show? All I can think of is uh, Yvonne Craig on a motorcycle whenever I think that. Oh, God, she was so hot. Batgirl. Oh, Batgirl, yeah, oh, the Batgirl That's cycle. all I can think of is, you know, if you any kind of bat motorcycle thing, I'm, I'm picturing her on the bike. Mm-hmm. Oh, my mm. God, Yes. I love it. And she could really ride a motorcycle. That, that was, was actually, a, they made the first one, I think, on one of her old bikes. She was, she was pretty smoking. <laughs> yep. 
Now, do you guys have favorite biker movies? Like, Oh, you know? I think that would have to be Torque. Torque, yeah. Yeah. Do you remember Torque? It came out a few years ago. Martin Henderson, Ice Cube. Oh, I don't know that one. Torque. Oh, I'm right oh, down. Oh, my God. It you is mean... a, uh, it, it, you would call, it's a good, bad movie. Okay. <laughs> it's a kind of movie to watch with friends with some beers, and you just make fun of the whole time. Yep. Th- those are my favorite. Like, look, it's like, there is such a thing as a good, bad movie. I mean, look. Yes. Oh, totally. Th- that's a whole genre unto itself. But Torque, I am looking that one up. Torque is, is fun because it doesn't, t- it's, it's the fast and furious of motorcycle movies, but they totally know there's, what they're doing. Yeah, there isn't that pretension. Right. They're, they're not taking themselves seriously with this movie. Wow. In wow. fact, our last episode of Wheel Nerds was a commentary track for Torque. Yeah. You, so I could cue it up and listen to your commentary track. Right. You, yep. you guys are nerds. <laughs> DVDs and motorcycles. Hence the name. Yeah, we play video games. I've got a room full of Japanese robot there, models. There's a lot of robots in here. Yeah. Uh, for, yeah we, we, that's another podcast right there. Yeah, I, I'm really into Gundam, so I'm a, I'm a nerd. Uh, the, the thing is, is though, nerds, let, let, I feel like we won. We oh, won. totally. Yeah, we won. Dude, <laughs> absolutely we won. Nerds won. We did it. And now we all ride motorcycles. I, I like bad movies so much, I like the Ghost Rider movies. <laughs> I, well, yeah, the, the Ghost Rider movies, I feel like they're not as good. I mean, in terms of, like, I feel like because it's so digital to me, it just looks fake. Yeah, it, it does it, look. It's like watching a cartoon. They did a better job on the sequel yeah. um, as far as uh, making them look more gritty. Right. Yeah. But it's still, I mean, it's like they're missing something really load-bearing dirt. <laughs> yeah, it just looks... I mean, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine with Nicolas Cage doing the role. Yeah, but uh, there's there's it's like they're they're missing something from either the writing or the direction that could really sell those movies. Mm. Yeah, there's something. It just looks to me. I'd almost rather see it raw, or or even just practical effects. Digital effects to me always just take me out of something. Mm. When you see, especially when you're seeing a digital effect of something that you're familiar with in real life, like riding, riding a motorcycle, it just looks it looks fake. That won't bother you as much at the end of Torque. <laughs> Is it just yeah. totally stupid? You, you, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not all. It, it defies explanation. It's probably 90% CGI. I feel like some of those, like when you look at it, I feel like Ghost Rider, was it made by a guy who like, d- 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 has ever ridden a motorcycle, you know? like. Oh, you always, uh. you always see the, the, the physics-defying device in action there. Yeah, it oh, doesn't yeah. hold up. Well, uh, You're familiar with the movie Priest? Priest, yeah, of course. So you know, you remember the the motorcycles in those movies? Oh yeah, yeah. Those those uh, the the commentary track for that they talk about how those bikes were unrideable. They had to have uh, tricycle wheels on them to keep them upright for the actors. Oh wow! And and then they had to chop the bikes in half and then just put put that back in digitally because that's how bad the bikes were in real life. Wow. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Yeah. Well, then uh, Anne uh, Anne Hathaway runs into the really expensive camera with the bat bike. Right. Yeah. That's that 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 whole scene. They they, they oh. can't seem to make bikes look like bikes. They're desperate to make bikes not look like bikes in movies. Yeah. They want them to like, look cool. Let's talk about it. Because first of all, I have to tell you what my favorite motorcycle film is of all time, and it's not oh, yeah. the Usual Suspects. It's not mm-hmm. Easy Rider. You know, it's not the Wild One. It's not one that I'm sure you guys are familiar with it, but it may surprise you. Akira. Uh, no. Well, Akira is definitely like Akira has, and, and I'm so glad they didn't end up making that that version that they were going to make. But Akira's amazing. Those scenes, like, I mean, they really sold it. I mean, yes, it's a cartoon, but yeah, Akira is uh, is definitely on the list um, of of some of the great scenes. But I, I, mine, well, I, I guess I should just tell you what it is. Yeah. And what's weird is is that I just looked it up online. <laughs> Here's what's weird. Your just telling is not the same as ours is. <laughs> yeah, building up to it. I'm building- Get on with it. <laughs> it's um, it's it's a movie made in 1973, and it's it's called Psychomania. Do you guys remember this? I do not know I this movie. I think I saw the preview for that. Really? On YouTube somewhere. Oh, it is one of the. It's like the biker exploitation type of movie. It's a British. It's a British bike exploitation movie with zombies. So. <laughs> 
what it is, what this, what this film is, George Sanders is in it, and he's a British actor that you would recognize. He's been in a million things. The premise of the film is it's this bike gang that loves to fuck with people. I mean, they'll like go places and they'll mess with people, whatever, and they laugh. And so they're like this sort of mean motorcycle gang. And the, the lead character is this guy, Tom, who is this spoiled rich kid. He's on this motorcycle and he knows that like his family is into the occult and he discovers the secret that if you believe that you will come back from the dead when you commit suicide, you will come back and then you are immortal and no one can kill you. So what happens is this Whoa. entire motorcycle gang, they all kill themselves and then no one can stop them. The cops can't stop them. They're like shooting them and they're they're basically like risen from the dead as this like immortal motorcycle gang that you know, can't be killed and can't be stopped. Well, I just looked it up online and they changed the name of it. It's it's recently been re-released as The Death Wheelers. I got to see this movie. It, it, yep. I'm, I mean, <laughs> I Set it up. DVD as uh, just, I, I do own the DVD of Psychomania. It's one of my all-time favorites. I must have seen it a million times as a kid on TV. It used to scare the crap out of me. You'd laugh at it now. But it's it's one of those where it's got like really hot looking chicks, and the premise behind it is really messed up because yeah. everyone in the movie kills themselves on purpose. They they orchestrate bizarre ways of killing themselves, and then all the dead bodies are in in the mortuary, and they all just wake up, and no one can stop them. I gotta see this movie. <laughs> We've gotta watch. Yeah, we gotta this movie. cue this one up. <laughs> yeah, or the Death Wheelers. It's probably on like instant play on Netflix or something. It's oh it's, hell yeah. Look for the Death Wheelers or Psychomania. But that movie had such an such an impression on me as a kid that I just I, it's sort of all those things that were planted in my head. And it's just like when I can, I'm I'm gonna ride a motorcycle when I can do it. Uh, <laughs> it's just that Los Angeles has betrayed me. Uh, Psychomania is my absolute favorite biker movie. A lot of people say, you know, uh, The Wild One, or they say, like, you know, Easy Rider. No, for me, it's Psychomania, this cheesy British horror film from 1973 that, that actually, it's, it's, it's basically zombie bikers. The, the bike, the gang in Psychomania, they wear these leather jackets, and on the back of the jackets it says, The Living Dead. Because at the end of the movie, they're basically immortal because they've all committed suicide with the exception of one girl who doesn't join the gang fully. And it's, it's just awesome. Weird story about that. Uh, George Sanders, who's in the film, uh, he's, he's, he's an actor that you would recognize. Uh, he's in All About Eve. He's won an Oscar. He's a guy that you, you see him, you go, I've seen that guy in a bunch of old film. He plays Shadwell the Butler. Shadwell the Butler. Um, so George Sanders, after the movie, he committed suicide. In like a hotel room, he just, I don't know, he OD'd on something. And uh, it's, it's, it's really tragic. But um, it was his last role. And that movie I would watch when it played in Detroit on The Ghoul Show. And when it played on The Ghoul, he would always dub in like sound effects. This was it's from my child. He would do these things where The Ghoul would like dub in farts or like someone would, you know, walk out of a room and you'd hear a toilet flushing. He just took all these, he just made fun of every one of these films. And I finally saw it unedited with all the goofy sound effects that the ghoul would throw in there to make fun of it. And, and it was, it was really an effective horror film. I mean, it, it disturbed me as a kid and, and I think it's never been, it's never been remade. Thank God they have not remade this movie because it basically encourages you to commit suicide. The whole thing is like, it's like a pro suicide film. If you commit suicide, you'll get these glorious powers that allow you to be immortal. It's cool. But what's weird is that just having looked up this movie on IMDb, it, they, there's a weird name change. It's now, it says also known as the Death Wheelers. Maybe it was the Death Wheelers in the UK and then it's, it's Psychomania in the US. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes, I mean, they definitely change when they take a, a film, they'll change the name of it when it goes to another country. So, uh, whatever. All right, look, back for the final segment of Wheel Nerds. You know, it's really interesting to talk to Chris here because, yeah. you know, he used to ride. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he can talk to us about his Daytona. But at the same time, he's talking to us like a non-rider. Yeah. Because he's he's coming to us with, he's saying the things that we, we expect non-riders to say. We expect the people. It's it's just weird. Like, I, I mean, you say, I'm talking like a, like a guy, I mean, I haven't ridden it in like 10 years. But I just, I'm sort of drooling at the prospect of, you know, maybe it's time. Maybe, maybe I, you know, I'm getting settled. Like, maybe I could get, that's why this this suggestion of the Ural. I mean, I'm looking at that going like, that is kind of cool. Like if I had the sidecar that I somewhere to put, cause you can only fit a certain amount of groceries in the side bags. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. The sidecar will hold everything. Yes. Yeah. All of it. 
Yeah. Hey, man, come out for Sundance. We'll throw you in the sidecar. There we go. We'll cruise down Park City Main Street. Oh, my God. Well, that's what Rip about, around a few corners. How do you now, like, I never, growing up in L.A., I mean, I would ride in, you know, wet weather, but never in winter weather. Like, what's, what's that? Like, how is that different? It's hard. Don't do it on two wheels. Mm-hmm. Things happen. Help us to have the third wheel to keep you upright. I hear you can fall and slide in ice. I hear I, it happens. Yeah, that just seems like I, I would – even like in rain, like guys would go they, – they wouldn't do it. I wouldn't – I would never like – I would never drink. When I was driving – when I was riding, to the, I'd go to the bar and meet my friends and I might have one beer and then I would switch to just the non-alcoholic beer for which I can't pick an alcoholic drink where my friends are not going to make fun of me. <laughs> it's maybe it's maybe it's my group of friends, but it's either like, well, I'll just I'll have the margarita because it's got that tequila stuff in it. Never blend <laughs> rock salt. But then I would just then I would say, sure, I'll have that non-alcoholic beer. It's a waste of money. You're just the cat. It's the same calories, but you don't get the effect. It's like I'm riding my motorcycle. I don't want to. I want to live. Yeah, I, I, drinking and, and riding a motorcycle. You, no, you, you, no, bad no. combo. Very bad combo. Yeah, I know that there's I think, a plateau I reach when it's driving a car. I can do it. And, of course, every person who gets a DUI says that or before they get one. I've never gotten one. But the plateau is significantly lower on two wheels. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I would never do it. Just It's too dangerous. You're, you're taking your life in your own hands. But I would have to say that my best, my best riding experience was actually, this is going to sound strange, during the L.A. riots. <laughs> I... True. This is a true, true story. I got so much free stuff. <laughs> true story. I was working at the time for a publishing company and I was riding my motorcycle to work like every, you know, like my group of friends would. We would ride motorcycles. Hey, free parking. Gas is cheap. It was one of, it was one of those things where I'm at work and we're like, God, this whole Rodney King thing. And here's what's even more scary. The R- Rodney King's lawyers were in the building where I was working at the time on Wilshire Boulevard. When he gave that speech, can, can we all just get along? That was right outside where I worked, right outside. And I would see him going up in the elevators and whatnot. There were a lot of celebrities that came through there, but I would always see him. I saw like Courtney Love and Kurt Cobain, Magic Johnson. There's just always this parade of people and and his lawyers were there. It was this thing where it's like we were watching the video on the news and it was freaking us all out. Like, oh my God, like this is not, this is really frightening. Like this is insane. Like, you know, this verdict is, it's tearing people apart. It's, it's just nuts. And the, the Beverly Hills police department called the building and said, uh, we cannot guarantee your safety. Go home now. And (laughs) they made an announcement at my work saying, you have to leave and go home now. We're shutting the building down. I'm sitting there. Oh, my God. So apparently this phone call was made to everyone at the same time. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, like the people work weird hours in L.A., right? OK, everyone at the same time got this message. My then wife, who was pregnant, li- was working on the west side in Santa Monica. We lived off of like right in the center of Hollywood off Melrose. And everyone got this message. I talked to her. Are you OK? Yeah, she's driving the fair lane home. I'm driving my motorcycle and I'm witnessing things right outside like i'm driving by stuff and i'm seeing like people with like just masks on like like raiding just going in and stealing stuff and this is happening like feet from me and you know there's a difference when you're in a car you feel protected when you're outside (laughs) yeah yeah you want to be closer to everything when you're on a motorcycle it feels like you're right in the middle right i'm watching stores i shop at and people bashing they were going around with baseball bats and smashing stuff and look i understand that anger clearly i mean i grew up in detroit or right outside of detroit and that's it's just so much racial tension there it's stupid in la i'd like to say it's better but our court system doesn't really help things i'm watching all this stuff happening and it's bumper to bumper traffic bumper to bumper traffic when you're on a motorcycle is sort of what do you do right finally i'm sitting here what the fuck am i doing like cop cars are just like (laughs) they, they weren't protecting anything people were going through red lights it's the closest thing to the zombie apocalypse i'll ever see that's it for this week's crash. Uh, I really want to thank uh, listener Beth Clark, uh, listens to the podcast. She suggested going on Wheel Nerds. And check out more episodes of their show. They're at uh, wheelnerds.com. Todd Cox and Chuck Brewer, two really cool dudes, cool biker dudes. And you can follow them on Twitter at Wheel Nerds. And of course, they're on iTunes, Wheel Nerds. Uh, before we end the show today, I want to thank also some, uh, some people who sent in. I always say, I get a little, little Easter egg at the end of the show about, I give away stuff for free. If you send me a self-addressed stamped envelope and I got a, a letter from a, a Mike E who says, keep up the awesome work. I listen to your podcast while uh, plugging away at the monitor at work. I hope, I hope your work's not very uh, complicated. 
I hope it's uh, involves. I hope it doesn't involve something like keeping the U.S. safe from nuclear missiles. Because if if my podcast was somehow responsible for the decimation of humanity, because because you, Mike, were not paying attention at your job, I would feel incredibly guilty. Um, another guy, uh, Mark Fulton, says. I feel like a kid sending away for the bonus GoBot because I had enough proof of purchase points. That's right, I said GoBot. Why doesn't Michael Bay make a GoBot movie? Anyways, I wonder what the surprise is for listening through the end credits. I, I, you know, it, you're going to have to be surprised. Sometimes, I've mentioned it on a couple of shows, but uh, yeah, if you, if, you, if, you, if you send in a self-addressed stamp envelope, I, I return the favor and send something back. Also, a uh, quick reminder to uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, Give us a five-star review if you think we deserve it. You can follow me at that Chris Gore on Twitter. You can follow the show at Pod Crash Show. You can follow the show producer, Sean Merrick, at Angry Hero Sean. And uh, you can also uh, like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash podcrash. There's, that's, that's it for plugs. That's it for plugs. I got, I got something. You know, it's a little too early to talk about this, but I do have. We're going to be doing a live Pod Crash show uh, coming up in June. It's too early to discuss right now, but but uh, but that's going to be a really fun show, a live pod crash taping, um, a lot of fun. June, actually, you know the details. I'm the details are on the Facebook page right now, but I'm not going to talk about it now because that's wasting time. I actually, wasted time telling you about how I wasn't going to waste any time. I can't stand stuff like that. It's this is my pet peeve in TV when they say coming up next we'll have this. Or stay tuned for this. Because if they just cut all that stuff out and they actually just did the content, you wouldn't, you'd actually have more time. This is why, this is why I prefer the internet to everything. And, and I prefer podcasts because then you can, you can get to know your favorite people that you like to listen to. Uh, like, hopefully, hopefully you like, at least maybe you like me on, on the, the Facebook and on the internet. Uh, okay, uh, that's it for this week's show. Uh, as I always like to say, Let's get out of here! They were just ordinary troublemakers as long as they lived. But they returned from beyond the grave with superhuman powers, unleashing an unholy reign of terror that holds an entire community in the grip of psychomania. Psychomania. Everybody dies, don't they? But some come back. How do the dead come back, Mother? When you die, you've got to believe that you're going to come back. Farewell, Mother! Come, you kill yourself! That's right! Off the bridge! I'm going! You can only die once. After that, nothing and nobody can harm you. Oh, man, what are you waiting for? I must stop him. You can't. I must. Psychomania. What happened? You're not dead. That's what I was trying to tell you, Tom. I don't want to die. Get after them! And you know what you will become? Yes. And that it will be for all eternity. die once. After that, nothing and nobody can harm you. Psychomania. Hey, if you're still listening to this, you're probably a lot like me. You're the kind of person who stays through the end credits of a movie. 
That means we're a lot alike, and I like you. So for that, you shall be rewarded. If you want something for free, a surprise, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Pod Crash with that Chris Gore, 5042 Wilshire Boulevard, PMB 1500, Los Angeles, California, 90036. I will return that envelope with a surprise. And the first five people to direct message our Facebook page at facebook.com slash podcrash with their address will get a free DVD. The first five people. It is a DVD of my choice, so it's probably something I might have thrown away or I was just finished with or whatever. Look, it's not, it may not be a great DVD, but it's a free one, so why are you complaining? And if you're too lazy to direct message or send a self-addressed stamp envelope, keep listening because here's a bonus piece of audio from the Wheel Nerds podcast. Tips for hipsters. Later. You do have to be real careful, you know, when you're riding a bike that you got to know. You have to just sort of have a presence. I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's like the machine becomes part of you in a sense. You, you really feel it, you know, like so you want to wear clothes that are practical for that purpose. Whenever I see people like, oh, that's really cute, young hipster wearing that cute outfit. But if you spill on that thing, you're not going to have any skin left. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it hurts just as much at 30 miles an hour on a scooter as it does on a motorcycle, it turns out. And hipsters right. don't quite get that. Yes. You know, <laughs> a lot of scooter riders don't. Yes. And to that, I say science.